It looks like everything is good to go. Nice. Tight. Hello and welcome to Start the Beat with Sykes. My name is Sykes and this is my podcast. Before we get started, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who checked out last week's episode. If you're one of the people who listened to that conversation, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks so much for coming back. But for those of you out there who are new to the show, welcome. Please feel free to make yourselves at home. And as always, there's beer and soda and bottles of water that I did not bring in the fridge. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Cheers to the people over there. The crowd. Make some noise. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what's going on? Hope you're all well. I want to thank you for being here. Today I'm sitting here with technically four-fourths of the band Old Game, but only two-fourths on camera because, uh, you know, unexpected. Unexpected guests have arrived. We weren't planning for them to be here, but they are here. Shout outs to them. Thank you for being here. Hi, and Rhythm Section. Returning to the show, you two. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is your Tom, second. Tom and Brenda. Is yeah. that what you were looking for? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi. I, I was not ready to introduce you formally yet. I was just oh. saying. Oh. Oh. We're here. But that's okay. Rewind? No, don't okay. worry about it. Don't okay. worry about it. It's super cool. <laughs> it's super cool. All right. But yeah, we're really happy to have Old Game on the show. Make some noise. Before we get into that, I just want to shout out some events. Today is June 17th. That's when this will be uploading. And I do have some events this weekend that I'm going to promote real quick. June 20th, I will be playing some live beats at the track meet. If you know what the track meet is, then I don't need to tell you where it's at. But for those of you that aren't familiar, it is at the Il Royale up in the Brighton Heights area. It's a cool live hip hop cypher. There's people playing live beats, people freestyling, people doing music. I'll be there with my stuff doing some beeping and booping. If you want to come up to that June 20th, the day after that is emo night karaoke at the Smile Moose. I'll be DJing on the first floor, playing a bunch of sad music that you know I really don't like, but whatever. We don't got to talk about that. And then June 22nd, June 22nd, Old Game is having that album release party for Lunatics at Cativo. Sykes and the New Violence is playing. I've heard they are pretty good. <laughs> Old Game will also be there. And that's who I'm sitting here today with. I'm sitting here today with Tom and Brenda of Old Game. Like I said before, they are returning to the show. They're putting out a new album and, you know, what the fuck is up? How you been? You've been Hi. busy, I guess, Hi. working on new music and recording stuff and yeah. doing all that. Yeah, we did and that. And now you're back here to promote a show, promote an album, all these things. So tell us, why should we listen to the album? <laughs> Let's just get it out. Get that the hard question. Like hard question. <laughs> hey, you know. Um, I don't know. It's it's pretty fucking good. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard it. I was sent an advance copy. Thank yes. you. It yeah, sounds great. Tell, tell you did a really good job. Yeah, you, know, you did a really good job. Cool. I wish it was longer. That's yeah, my only complaint. Yeah, I do too. I do too. But so let's dive into this from here. So you know, the release is four tracks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was that an intentional sort of thing, like kind of? giving into the 2019 short attention span mentality of things? Or was it just like a, well, this is what we have ready and we want to put something out? That. I think it was both. <laughs> yeah. I think we were giving into our own short attention span. Yes. Sure, you know? sure, sure. I think we wanted to do an album and we were like, I think an EP is what's going to happen first. Yeah, because mm -hmm. this is a follow-up to a full length that you put out yeah. a few years ago, right? Yeah. So, you know, in the time in between then, how have things been with the band? We'll say since you've been on the show last, because we don't have to get into the whole origin story of the band. Yeah, yeah, we already yeah. did all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how have things been since, you know, over the past year? I would say, I mean, even since Flower Moon was released in 2016, the, the four out of four that are present um, are still present. So the last three years was um, a lot of promoting Flower Moon, taking that around, celebrating that, working on new songs and really getting to know each other. Um, so I think these four songs really represent all of our different characteristics. Lunatics wouldn't be what it is without our awesome rhythm section. Aww. So we're really excited. <laughs> we're really excited about the album. Cool. I think the album sounds great. You know, we can touch up a little bit just on like the recording process and how it was done. I don't think it was, I imagine it was a whole lot of just a, 
guitars and amps and microphones and things like that. Yeah, not, those not, things were that. Was it recorded in the future with like, <laughs> you know, like a, you, you plug a, you plug a cable into a magic box and no, everything's no, done. And then no. you, you, you only have to play the songs, right? You just push a button and it fixes everything <laughs> for you. It's pretty cool. I That's wish. what being in a metal band's like in 2019. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. I want that. It's pretty <laughs> sick. It's for, you don't even have to play guitar and you could be Steve Vai. It's just sick. <laughs> Is that why you play metal? <laughs> yeah, totally. <Okay. laughs> We'll consider it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there were there were guitars and amps there. Yeah, I don't know. It was fun. I think in the past like number of years, I've also gotten like a little more into the gear side of shit too. Mm -hmm. So it was fun uh, bringing all that into the studio. Yeah, and experimenting around and yeah. doing all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely more familiar with my pedal board this time around. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was really good to go in there feeling more confident with that. Mm -hmm. with you know recording the album how long did it take to track out these four songs for you i want to say we did like five sessions that were maybe like six to eight hours where'd you record it at uh the wilderness studio or the wilderness recording studio with jay vega okay like over in i want to say cranberry cranberry -ish. okay yeah that's a yeah. that's a name that has popped up a lot but a person who has never crossed my path for he, whatever reason he hides in the secret in his cabin in the woods yeah yeah he's, he's really kind of like this hidden gem that yeah we i find upon. that the, like most people that are actually good at what they do that's what they do you mm -hmm. don't see them yeah. around <laughs> yeah no. you know any anytime i see somebody that like you know out all the time and i see them around i'm like oh that person probably sucks at everything yeah. they do <laughs> Well, then I must why be good at what I do because so I never go out. Uh -huh. <laughs> you really, you really got to like, you know, give it your all, you know, as songwriters, you know, what is your relationship with the outside world and then creating art? What is that like for you too? How often do you write together versus writing separate? How about that? That's a more I think, focused I think question. It's changed over the years. Yeah. Um, I think as our lives have like respectively have grown, uh, we find ourselves with less time to be sitting around together. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still spend a lot of time just like with my guitar yeah. alone. Uh, <laughs> we'll like send each other poems and stuff back yeah. and forth over FB Messenger. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so we still like there's times where we're writing about the same themes. I mean, that's how this album happened. Um, I think in general, where we both are impacted by society and the outside world in a big way. Um, we are always writing about ourselves and our own feelings and thoughts, but it's definitely a reflection, I think, of what's going on in everyone's minds at this time. Um, and not only like peer age folks, but pretty much anybody that's having a hard time dealing with the world. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And with the Lunatics album release, there's a really cool art component to this show. Let's chat about that. Tell component. me about the com art component. So this is my baby. Yeah, this, this um, is her little... I had this idea whenever we chose, you know, our release date, I said, I want to do something special for this release. Um, Lunatics means a lot to us as a record. Um, and I think it's through line um, is a commentary on the current state of ourselves and those around us. And um, I mean, I'm a therapist by trade. So the through lines oh, that I, I didn't hear, know that. yeah, I'm a therapist, oh, neat. Um, mental health therapist. So what I hear is that. Um, throughout the songs and and of course it is because mental health is a part of all of us we all have to care about our mental health um, so when I knew that was happening and I wanted to make it bigger um, I'm like you can only fit so many bands on a, a lineup without it being ridiculous so but how can I get more of the community involved and I have so many friends that are artists um, visual artists and a lot of them do it professionally but there's a lot of them that don't do it professionally at all so maybe I've seen their pieces, but they haven't shared it with anybody in the whole wide world. So I started thinking, I'm like, what would it be like if I brought all these people into a space and the space was there for us to maybe be able to talk about whatever, um, but, but knowing that it could be a little more open and that maybe we're all dealing with similar things. And I've been very surprised because even some of these initial emails that I'm getting with like the artist bios, um, and them sending in their pieces, like their drawings, their paintings, all of these things. I'm finding that some of them are even being more open with me about like, hey, I'm sorry I missed the deadline. I'm going through a med change. Um, this is what I've been dealing with, blah, oh, blah, 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 blah. And just being able to be open and and somehow knowing, because I've been putting this out here, that, oh, I can tell this person that this is why I'm not meeting this deadline or this is why I'm having a hard day. And it's okay to say that. 
Um, a lot of time with medical disorders, um, you know, someone will say, oh, you know, I have, I have a cold today. That's why I didn't meet the deadline. And people that have depression or anxiety or other things will often say, oh, I'm sick in the stomach. Like I'm having gastro issues or, you know, I have a cold or I have a bad migraine when that's really not what is happening. Um, so I'm really hoping for the show. And like I said, it's happening before the show is even happening, but I'm really happening just for that night that people might be able to look around and be a little more open with somebody just because, hey, we're here in the space. That means we're open to supporting each other and acknowledging that this is something that everyone deals with and that it's okay to talk about it. Yeah. No, I think, it, no I think it's really <laughs> awesome to get all of those people together and give them an opportunity to connect with the outside world. You know, I mean, like, you know, somebody that's walked that the line of both, um, you know, trying to do stuff professionally in the visual world and in a musical world. I know that like, getting into the music scene is intimidating, but getting into like the art scene can be super intimidating because it's kind of like split, you know, there are like people that are really high brow and just kind of like brats. And then there are people that are just completely disorganized and, you know, and it's yeah. like, there's yeah. like, there's a middle ground, but not a whole lot of people like facilitating that middle ground. Yeah. We were kind of talking about that too. Just like how we have, you know, some people that, um, have been in the art scene and selling their art and you know they have pieces for like 400 and, you know and that's still like cheap for art oh totally know? yeah but then we you know we have some people that are like you know i've never even shown this to anyone and you know price negotiable yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yeah you we're know, like so okay like all all levels you mm -hmm. know yeah but, no i think it's really cool to be able to give those people a space to you know show their art and connect with other people and you know like hey you're not alone there are so many yeah. people in this universe that are you know, for, you know, in the best way possible, just as weird and kind of disconnected as you are, but you yes. can all connect together in yeah. your own, you know, disconnected way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you know, we talked about the lineup just briefly for the show musically. Mm -hmm. uh, you're playing the, I'm playing with my band. Mm -hmm. You also have Jess Klein and the good time. So now we yeah. have like this really fun, like mixture of everything and an artist that I'm not familiar with. It's from Ohio. Yes. Right? Right. Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can um, we talk a little bit about this artist? Um, it, he's a friend, Tino. Um, we originally, um, Oh my God, I just blanked on their band name. Sidekick uh, complex. Side, sidekick complex. So they're a, a three piece. It's like bass drums and, uh, him rapping over top of it. Um, but he also does solo, um, just like with beats behind him. Um, so he'll be solo for this show. Um, and we're just, he's just so good and he's such a great person. Mm -hmm. Um, we're just excited to have him and yeah. bring him back to Pittsburgh again. So I have a really interesting question. Like this is like a really cool question because it ties really well into your show and something I've been talking about with bands a lot lately is, you know, how do you as a band feel about genres and like bubbles in the scene? Is that <laughs> something that you're trying to like break out of with this lineup or is it just this just feel natural for I you to do always, something like this I think maybe I mean it's natural for us I think we maybe even talked about this before where we like feel like we never like quite fit in no matter what you know yeah um, but when we get to when we put on our own show we just get to pick our favorite people you know so we don't think as much about like this genre is going to fit well just like hey is this going to be a good show and mm -hmm. are these are we going to have fun with our friends? Yeah. And that's really what we want. And I think, yeah, like you said, when we get to do our own show and pick the lineup and I guess essentially curate the event, right? Um, it is, it's about who do we want there that night? Who do we want on the stage? Not really about genre because our friends like all different kinds of genres too. Um, so we just, we do, we want it to be a fun atmosphere and a lot of different things and diversity is fun. Absolutely. So I think yeah. we aim for that more and more as we put on our own shows. I think it's going to like play really well just with all of the different components that are a part of the event. I think it's going to make it really fun for the people that decide to, you know, spend their Saturday night there. Yeah. Yeah. Versus I think other something things for everyone. It's really yeah. hard. I think, you know, now as we are all getting older, um, I'm thinking everybody in this room is probably in their thirties or late twenties at, yeah. at best. And, uh, you know, all of our friends that are in the same age range as us. It's like, you know, if you're trying to get them to come out on a weekend, it's like you better have like something really cool lined up for them. Cause yes. yeah, yeah. It's it takes a lot for, you know, some 30 year olds to just go watch some people on stage play some songs and then go home. 
Well, that's another part of this. It's it's a business aspect, right? So I'm thinking, yeah, something about community and bringing my friends together and empowering others to share their art and share what they need to say. But I'm also thinking the same thing. I'm like, okay, we're going to put on this event. How many releases are happening in June and July? A lot of releases are happening in June totally. and July. We need to do something special. Um and that's the best way to do it is make it a community effort that it's not that night isn't just about us. Like lunatics is definitely the featured situation happening there, but there is a lot going on. So that's what I'm hoping that someone will come and they will get something that evening that is helpful to them. Absolutely. I hope so, too. And uh, I've been doing a segment now on the show uh, where I suggest food from different places. And uh, this ties in really well. And I just want to let the people know that you got to eat this. The pizza at Cativo is some of the most underrated pizza in the city of Pittsburgh, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to say it's the best, but I'm going to say that it's highly underrated, especially considering the source. So if you're going to be at this event and you're hungry, I highly suggest Get the, the pizza. pizza. Get the pizza at Cativo. You got to eat it. <laughs> I suggest asking to uh, what me and Stacy do is we get uh, we ask them basically to make uh, everything that would go on an eggplant Parmesan and put it onto a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's fucking fire. I'm all about that. So that's my suggestion. Yeah. I haven't had their pizza in like a couple of years. So now I'm, now I want pizza. Yeah. I think it's pretty <laughs> fucking good. And you know, I mean, granted, I'm not a pizza snob. I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh, you got to go to Fiori's. You got to go to Minio's. You got to go. To I don't give a shit. You know, it's <laughs> fucking, it's granted. There's some bad pizza, but yeah. the yeah. pizza Cativa is good. Yeah. Even, you know, for yeah. somebody that, you know, I'm a pizza fan. Yeah. So. I think I it's like good. It. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, from the peanut gallery. Any? There you go. Yeah, I agree. All, all, all food is good at Cativo. <laughs> I've never well, been I'm disappointed. Sold. Do, I'm do you, do you have, I'm going to have pizza so, before my set. So. so, you know, pivoting this conversation into food and the stuff that really matters because yeah. nobody cares about <laughs> yeah. music. You know, uh, is there a spot, a post-show spot where old game goes to get grub on? I don't know. Eric's kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to eat tacos. <laughs> we did do fang. What is fang? Fang's closed down. It, it was, was a in hibachi Bloomfield. restaurant. The hibachi restaurant oh, okay. across from BBT. It's gone now, but they had oh, fun oh, lights. Oh, with that, all the okay. Lights. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I definitely, yeah, that, that place that looked like a bro car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like a Honda Civic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a lot of like terrible music would play. It was like pop songs, but they were re recorded with people because they probably weren't allowed to play the pop songs in there or something. <laughs> so it's just terrible versions of these terrible like pop recorded songs. karaoke. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like karaoke was happening. There was a really scary bridge in there that had fish under it oh, yeah, and they little, covered like it up. Boy pond what? Yeah. yeah it was, they covered it up and they oh, put the sounds, fish somewhere else. It's really <laughs> miserable. It's going to be yeah. something else. Now. All right. So yeah. no more fang. You no got to find, fang. I guess you got to yeah. find a new spot. Huh? Like on the road, our spot, I think is sheets. Yes. I think that's where we always end up. Okay. So where are you on this like completely ridiculous debacle of sheets versus Wawa? Do you have sheets. a- Sheets. I mean, I don't give a shit. It's all the yeah, same. That's I don't know. How I people, feel. I'm like, it's a gas station. People yeah. put emotional investment in this bullshit. I'm like, yeah. uh, personally, I don't care, but we're going to go to Sheets if there's one and the other one. Yeah. We're going to go there because it's familiar. Yeah. It's where Sheets we're, is from home. where we're from. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just. So, a, do you think Gitgo has any fighting chance in this argument? <laughs> if they were beside each other, I'd still go into Sheets. <laughs> no, no. Gitgo makes some of us sick uh, sometimes. I'm sorry, Gitgo, but it's happened. So we go oh, for no. Sheets. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's not talk shit on anyone. <laughs> I don't know. What are they gonna do? Giant eagle is gonna come yep. swoop yeah. us up. Maybe yeah. sheets will come in and with, say, with, with, with "Here's talons, some money, right? <laughs> Here's some money. Let us sponsor you for talking shit on Get Go." <laughs> We're really pulling for that sheet sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, I don't, I don't blame you. Yeah. I do not fucking blame you. Yeah. Do you have any like band practice rituals when you do get together? Is there anything that you? We show up late. Uh, <laughs> we catch up on everything. Mm -hmm. um, we go through our set a couple times. Maybe jam. Do you have like the uh, like the the thirty percent practice, seventy percent bullshit yeah. dynamic? Oh yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much where Grey Walker is yeah. too. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we practice. Yeah. Oh, then no. Josh comes. Then we practice more. <laughs> He works late. Yeah, no, it's understandable. <laughs> He's a busy it's, man. It's really hard to get all that, get everybody's schedules lined up. Do you have like a, a dedicated practice space or do you practice out of a house? 
Uh, out of Eric's basement cool. currently. Uh, I think that's about to change soonish. So Ooh. I don't know. We haven't quite figured out our next step as far as where we're going to practice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but we've know. we used to do the practice space thing, but yeah, that was rough. Like, like were you share, like sharing a space with other bands? And yeah, stuff like that? and not even like actually on the lease. Just like, hey, we're uh, going to throw you some money and yeah. like, hop in this like yeah shitty room. It was <laughs> frustrating at best, so we're not yeah. doing that anymore. Yeah, yeah, it like it like. Little things like that, like being, I'm not somebody that's like, oh, I'm a fucking adult, so I want adult things, but little nuanced things like that, like, is like saving the 20 bucks a month really worth the hassle of mm-hmm. having these fucking idiots in here? Yeah. Or, and like, you know, leaving shit laying around or it was, moving it was something. Like, it was yeah, gross. Dude, one yeah. time I came in and like, I had left my pedal board there and it was like opened up and everything, like all the plugs were oh my gosh. undone. And I'm oh, like, who the never fuck again. was like rummaging through my shit? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that was, it was. And we even covered our stuff up. In blankets in hopes that they wouldn't touch it. Oh, One time we in came in, and, blankets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> there was like a dude living in there. At yeah, one we point. found out I someone was living it was, there. Yeah, it was. So it was a lot. It was we had to leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> Boo to that dude. <laughs> mm. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll ever like share a practice space with a band ever again. Mm-mm. I'm well, if you <laughs> if you need another band, to share your practice space. No, we have a re- we have a really good working relationship. Yes. I don't want I don't want to ruin this over like you know like you move my stuff. I leave a Wawa bag next to your fucking thing, and you're like, who brought the Wawa in the sheet space? Yeah, fists are thrown. Yeah. Eagles start knocking on yeah. the door. Like what the fuck? I think that, I I don't think we need any of that. We really don't need any of that. So uh, let's 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 dive into a listener question. We do some listener we, we questions listener. nowadays. <laughs> we have listener questions. Yeah, we I mean, legit. they're this not they're not legit. they're not sent live, but there are people that do send in some questions, okay. and sometimes I think it's fun to uh, to answer them, and nice. you what, get some get some we, goofy what topics kind of going up. All right, so is it gonna pop up on the screen? It's gonna pop up on the screen. All right, so our first question here from Colt Dalmasso. This is kind of stupid. How long can you hold your breath? You guys want to find out? Ah, okay. ah, uh, uh, hmm. come on. <laughs> All He's right. going to lose. Yeah. That's why he's working. If you're not watching the podcast, this is another reason why you should be watching and not listening. I, I just want to say before we start this that I just realized the other day that I've been smoking for half of my life. It's <laughs> fucked up. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's try holding our breath. I realized, re- I realized recently the other day that I've been a fan of mindless self-indulgence for more than half of my life. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucked up too. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Super crazy. All right. Okay. So how long can we hold our breath? Oh, when Let's, are we starting? Uh, Count us in. Three, two, one, go. Smoker over I here. I'm just being quiet. I'm gonna give up. I got like boogers on my fingers and shit. Uh, Eric had a timer. <laughs> How long did we make it? <laughs> 36, I think. Oh, God. All right. Wow. Thanks, Cole. We're all seconds. vocalists. I just want to point that out. Yeah. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting boogers on my fingers, and it was really funny. All right. Toddy Tondera, without looking at directions, step by step, how do you make a chicken pot pie? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, the freezer section in Chinese <laughs> oh, Yes. Yeah. And put it in the microwave, but remember to take it out of the cardboard box. Don't put it in something else because it's going to leak out the side. Um, my guess is you you get some sort of like a a a dough that you make. Yeah, you would need the the dough. First, the dough, I would imagine. and then some like you need the stuff that, that goes the into it. There's kind of like a gravy uh, and like yeah. peas and carrots and onions and yeah. chicken. Celery. Yeah, I've never celery. Actually made one. Some seasoning. 
and then, like you like kind of like layer that out and then you put some more dough on top of it and then like you cute you cut like a cute little some cute little slits in it then you put it in the oven i'm gonna guess like 425 preheat it first <laughs> 420 ish yeah uh, don't try this th- then i'll say like like 25 to 35 minutes depending on the size of your oven okay do you, should we try that too now? Or? <laughs> yeah. Try try the uh, try, cooking portion. Try the Sykes chicken pot pie recipe and let me know if you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question, Toddy. And uh, you know we will uh, let's let's get back into talking about some music and life and shit like that. Kay. So you know with planning events, planning this lunatic event, you know you're. Doing, you're doing it at a, uh, a a conventional venue in Pittsburgh. Cativo is a place that hosts a lot of shows. A lot of people, you know, do normal events there. But you're using this event, you're using the space in kind of an unconventional way with the artists and things like that. Um, what is your feeling on you know playing shows at unconventional spaces? You know, uh, I mean, you mentioned on at Millvale, you played at Panza Gallery. How mm-hmm. was that for you? They typically don't have shows there. Um, I don't know. I've never been in there before, but there was a stage and like a bar in the back. Like it was more than it, it I felt expected. like a venue, right? Yeah, yeah. it mm-hmm. did. Um, but it was already a little more unconventional for us because we were playing um, three piece acoustic. So it was already kind of weird for us. Um, I think as long as they have good sound, I feel OK about sure. choosing a place I'm not used to. Sure, That's like, like my big thing. And then for Cativo. They apparently have taken down all the paintings on the walls because they've had a lot of punk shows there and like moshing. So they took everything down and the dude was like, as long as you're not doing that, you can hang up whatever you want. So there's already like studs in the walls, like ready for art to go up. Oh, that's super so convenient. Yeah, we kind of locked in to yes. uh, Cativo as our venue mm-hmm. and it really like feels like the perfect spot. Is it going to be upstairs or downstairs? downstairs? Downstairs. Okay, cool. Yeah. But like for a minute, I think we were kind of freaking out because we couldn't find a spot that we were comfortable with. Totally. And yeah, it could we, be it could be hard. It's funny. I don't know if any of you saw that like does Pittsburgh have too many venues I article saw it and that I was, said no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, I think that a point that somebody I know had made that like Pittsburgh doesn't really have a whole lot of venues, but there's a whole lot of bars that have music and it get makes it confusing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um and like you said unconventional venues like yeah. you have all these bars and stuff and then you have like 20 house venues like it Yeah, 20 house venues like, and then <laughs> spaces like like Roboto which is like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, all the love in the world to the people that run Roboto oh, but for sure, calling but that place calling that place a venue is a fucking stretch. <laughs> To, to, to some degree, you know, yeah. again, no, no beef, but you know, it's no, just like, it's, I love Roboto, there's, there's not it a, is, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a room with speakers in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it, I consider that like an unconventional space, yeah, but it's like, no, kind of like been, uh, it's definitely been, uh, kind of brought in as a space. I mean, I saw Andrew WK in that room, so That's, it's kind of yeah, like, I remember when that went down. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, like it, it is, it is a venue, but yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I just have to adapt though. I'm with you though, in terms of. You know, if a place has good sound, then I'm super down. Mm-hmm. You know, with Sykes and a New Violence, I mean, it's like a big part. The place needs to have a good PA for us to even make sense. Especially for you guys. I feel like you have yeah. a lot more like DI stuff mm-hmm. going Yeah, on. we actually, I we bring a PA to shows that we don't, so if we don't know, if we, do, if we don't know the venue, we have like our own backup yeah no, setup. That's, that's smart yeah. yeah um our biggest issue is uh we're just like a loud band so if it's like a shitty pa system they're always like hey turn down because we can't hear the vocals and, and we're, we're like, like hey you we can't, can't turn down your drummer turn down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, always, I always look at eric i'm like can you turn down he's like yeah i'll turn down i'm like okay and then we did it <gasps> <laughs> like you well, can't the, turn down the drummer <laughs> you know, i was gonna say like and that that's an issue that we have with gray walker and playing the space like Roboto. Yeah. Where it's yeah. just like there's something about, you know, what we do and even maybe to some extent the kind of music you do where it kind of needs to be presented on this like larger than life sound spectrum because yeah. of how like uh how thick the sound is. And if it's not presented in that way, it doesn't come off right. No. And it sounds weird. Yeah. And then it's just like there's a weird disconnect. I think you can't I hear think us sometimes singing. like Go ahead. like the sound person will get upset with us though that you can't hear the vocals. And I'm like, well, yeah, this is well, there's how a, it has to be. I guess like there's like a <laughs> really... And also that's your job. So let's talk about this. Well, there's a really <laughs> interesting dynamic with what you do. Like, I mean, as somebody that has run sound at shows, 
I think it would be, depending on the room, it would be really challenging to mix a band like you because you are so heavy, but vocally you're not really aggressive. I mean, at times it is, but at it's times. so... I'm it's definitely so, more aggressive than It's she so is. dynamic, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what yeah. I mean? Like you also, you almost need to be like running like compression on your vocals live yeah, to help balance like everything out. But a volume lot of, on the fly, probably. A lot of people, yeah, either yeah, volume on the fly or running a compression, and a lot of people just don't, Either they, they aren't used to doing that, they don't have the capability to do it, or in some unfortunate circumstances, they just don't give a shit. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. I always feel kind of bad because I know I'm like hard to work with. <laughs> well, the cool uh, thing about Kativo is that everybody that does sound there is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, we know who's doing our sound, yeah, and they have great sound someone. there. Yeah. So, yeah. Cormac yeah. has seen us play quite a few times. He's usually doing sound at Spirit, but he apparently does sound at Kativo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we requested him. And that's when we have the best... Like for local shows, if we can request someone that we knows that knows us, like Dan, who just did his last show at Howler's recently, uh, Sizing there. Anybody that we know that does it, if we can request them for our shows, especially the shows that we really care about, we will. Like we'll request a certain sound person in advance or like if we have to pay them a little extra to get them to do that show at this place, we will do that because it's important. Yeah. No. And when they know us, they know our music, they know when we're going to get loud and quiet and yeah, they can kind of work with us. Mm -hmm. sure. But I like that idea of getting compressors and looking to things like that. Like vocals is definitely like we got our pedals down. Vocals would definitely be something to look yeah, at. Yeah, I, I run a I run a vocal compressor with Sykes now just because like uh you know my vocal performance live can be pretty all over the place, just kind of going from like rapping to like I'm not like screaming, but sometimes stuff gets a little more aggressive. Yeah. And I always have this like pet peeve when like I'm like at a show and like a rapper gets loud and like you can hear it clipping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like the pitch yeah, yeah, yeah. just sounds real bad. That yeah. like really bugs me. So like I use a compressor basically to make sure that if I'm getting louder, it's not gonna be like blowing everything out and everything stays in place. It's kind of weird sometimes though, because I like I run the really strong compression. So like I'll be like yelling, and but it's, and it's, it's just coming it, it's just coming out like yeah. level and it's yeah. like I can hear like it just doesn't sound right. It, like it's really weird to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it I would. Only, be, I would definitely suggest it. Yeah, for sure. We've talked about like looking into more like vocal pedals on our end, like mm -hmm. vocal effects on our side versus like make, I would, relying uh, on the sound amazing. person. Yeah, if you if you amazing. if you need any suggestions, I can. Yeah, I have like I a whole. I have like, like a whole. I ended up because sure. I used to run um the the machine pad live yeah. for all my effects yeah, but okay. now i i replace that and i do all my vocal effects live with pedals okay so i have like a whole board yeah mm -hmm. and uh yeah there's like some pretty cool stuff um the biggest thing is a uh, radial engineering makes a pedal called the voco loco okay and basically it lets you uh it, it's a vocal preamp that has an xlr in and quarter inch out with sends so you could run any guitar pedal through it but still have your XLR connections. Yeah, okay. Because that's always yeah. a big issue. When because I find that a lot of the vocal pedals that are sold and marketed as vocal pedals are kind of corny. Yeah, no, I've looked into a lot of them, and they're all like a lot. And it's like they a, try and do a lot of everything built in one, like yeah, multi effects. And like you know? I, I mean, with guitar pedals, I always like I've always really preferred like I want one pedal that does one thing really yeah. good rather than like one pedal that does ten things mediocre. Yeah. yeah. So I've looked into like those those voice tones. I think they are where yeah. each one does a specific thing. So that's probably yeah. like the yeah. Route even I'm even even into. those are kind of weird. Like my suggestion would be to get the get the Voco Loco and just use guitar pedals yeah because like there's just there's so much more flexibility with the stuff that's made for guitar so how do you handle like doing reverb because you can't really do much i don't use a reverb pedal okay yeah, yeah See, i mean I would, I, yeah i think we would need that i would just i would just get, just get a fucking holy grail <laughs> yeah see but then if it's coming through your uh your monitor then you're getting feedback you know so i feel like that has to be on the sound person's and yeah, well, there, there, of, well, there's like, <laughs> well, so there's, there's, you have, I think there's, there's multiple outputs and you have a control of your wet and dry with there the Voco Loco. Okay. Yeah. So you could do that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. If you wanted to. I do. I only, how, so how, we were how much about, nerdy talk do we, we want to get into? We were let's, talking let's, about compression. I only just started using a compressor with my guitar and it's like the same thing, like getting used to like. If you mm -hmm. hit it really hard, you know, it's still like, yeah, you got to know like when and where to use it, but it's like definitely super beneficial. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you like, you're somebody that's a really dynamic player and like your songs are so 
Yeah, they're they roller are. coasters. Yeah, so we go into like yes. these quiet, like finger picking parts, you know, which is definitely like why I started using a compressor was because of like parts like that. Um, but yeah, then like blowing up into a lot loud, we get heavy handed. I think I know I do like I live. Do. I'm definitely like hitting harder. You know? Yeah. And that's that's the kind of stuff that you just need to figure out how to like control that and figure out how to emulate that uh, sort of like that studio production live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, there's definitely ways to do it. It's just a matter of, you know, how much time and money do you want to spend yeah, figuring right. it all out, you know? Yeah, it's a whole nother hobby in uh -huh. itself, for sure. I think that's something that was, that's different about this release than would be the last. Like with Flower Moon, we added a lot of extra guitar lines and vocal lines oh, to okay. the studio. And with Lunatics, that's not the case. Like we pretty much stuck to what we're doing. Yeah, we tried to like cut down a little bit. On totally, the, I on think the it's, extra stuff. It's really easy in the studio to get kind of like, oh, like an extra harmony there yeah. would sound cool, and yeah, it would. But then, like, whenever you get used to hearing the songs a certain way, and then you play them live, and it feels like they're naked almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we tried to. I think our idea originally was to have it like closer to our live sound. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna say I don't. I don't know if I already said this, but the that the release does sound just like a group of people in a room playing songs. Good. Like it doesn't sound Good. like yeah. there are certain albums that I listen to and like I hear somebody sitting behind a mixing board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's albums that I hear and it sounds like I'm just sitting in a room listening to people play music. Yeah. Good so. job, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, those, Dang those, it. those, 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 uh, they did a really good job. I'm going to have to track them down at some point in time mm -hmm. and, you know, pick their brain. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We, we, I, li I like, I like chatting with people that record music. I think that especially now people in 2019, the year of our Lord, who are still <laughs> recording music in organic ways and not fully giving into the digital revolution, you know, still taking the time to, mic up amps and do put in put in the little extra work it's not even that much work yeah mm -hmm. i mean but we're still like i would say recording digitally totally you know, not like tracking onto tape you know yeah but um, i mean there's a i mean it's still i mean yeah, it's not analog recording but it's not like you're recording direct in and using all plugins yeah, for everything no. and yeah like i think we try chopping up stuff and like quantizing your guitar parts and yeah we try stuff. and do i mean obviously we still like uh work I, don't know. I think we're kind of on the sloppy side as far as our guitars go. Uh, so there's still like some like editing, well, but I we mean, tried to do less of that too. Yeah, like as many like full takes as yeah, we could. Don't apologize for being human. That's yeah. what <laughs> that's what makes rock and roll rock and roll. Yeah. And like yeah. if if it's all sterilized and perfect, something sounds weird about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that like that's a big problem that a lot of like the modern rock bands have. Like if you listen to like a and Imagine Dragons, or even like a 21 Pilots. Like, I don't think that those bands write bad songs. Everything is just produced so sterile that it's like impossible to connect with it because yeah, it sounds like yeah. fucking robots making mm -hmm. music. Yeah. 21 Pilots Live is actually really sick. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken the time uh -huh. to check any of their stuff out, uh -huh. but when they play live with a full band, it's amazing. And I'm like, wow, I wish they sounded like this all the time. But yeah. they don't. You know now, what I mean? Are they, are they a two piece? They are a two okay, piece. Yeah, but yeah. there's video of them playing live with like a full band. Okay. You know, like the two of them and like other drummers, guitar player, you know, like a whole yeah, like thing. Yeah. And it's fucking like really, 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 really good. Yeah. Like, wow. Like these are good songs. I can't argue with this. Yeah. And well, I'm admittedly thing, not a though. huge fan of that band. But, like, I can't argue a good live performance. Yeah. And but they're really good. When you get in the studio, though, I think you want to, like, oh, I want to do, fancy like, I want to take advantage of all this fancy Oh, totally. Shit, oh, you know? oh <laughs> well, that, too. And those motherfuckers would not be selling out stadiums all over the place if their albums sounded like them live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's yeah. too raw. Like, it's yeah. too, like, it's kind of heavier, grosser, like, just more extreme. It's not all, like, polished. Yeah. And, like just where we are now with the pop culture of music, people like that polish, especially young people because they, they're they growing up. They don't know anything else. Like hearing yeah. something raw, it makes it sound old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want like the happy middle ground. Like I don't want it to sound like we just recorded it in a garage, but totally. I don't want it to sound like, like you said, like we just plugged in and then magically <laughs> we recorded an album. <laughs> yeah. I think that there's like a point in time definitely where like some, some technology should have just stopped. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we're good. We don't need any more. Like it's getting really crazy now. Like you can, you can record guitar, play a real guitar, 
but record it onto a MIDI map. Yeah. And it will record yeah. all your notes. And if you play a wrong note, you could just fix it on the MIDI yeah. map. And then yeah. you're running it through a guitar plugin that has like, you know, whatever amp in the world yeah, you want. Any amp, any and it's, pedal, any speakers. Yeah. yeah can, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. I don't think I'd like that. I feel like that would take away, I don't know, feeling about any of the practice that I put into it. Like, why am I practicing if I'm just going to allow something else to like take over my part? The I, thing that, that wouldn't feel good. The to thing me. that's really cool about stuff like that is like, say you're on a budget and you're somebody that doesn't have access. Like, oh, I don't know what my guitar would sound like with, you know, an octave. Yeah. But it's, if you have access to a plugin and, and stuff yeah. like that, you can mess with the octaves. You mm -hmm. can see what stuff would sound like and just experiment experiment with what different amps might sound like and like that's cool yeah. but to just like stop there and be like yeah fuck it and yeah. just go with everything i don't know i mean it's really hard to dig any deeper into this conversation and not sound like an old man <laughs> <laughs> i but, don't like, like all this tech stuff yeah yeah because like there's a lot of really cool things about technology too no, dude, I hate fuck it. There's so many metal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, dude. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said it. There's something that's um about like people that use the Kempers live. But like I get it. It's like so light, right? Totally. Like, you don't have to lug around a fucking tube amp or I, worry about any of that shit. The 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 practice of it, I 100 percent understand. Especially if you're a band that's touring over like you're you're like a European band over yeah. here. Yeah. But the thing that really sucks about it is that unless you're in like this huge venue, everything sounds so transparent. Yeah. I remember I saw Flesh God Apocalypse at Cativo. Okay. Shout outs to Cativo. <laughs> and they were using Kempers Live. And unless you were standing in the far back of the room, it sounded completely empty. It's yeah. a metal show. I'm, so trying to, I'm, I'm trying to be up by the stage. I'm curious. So like, do they there's still no have monitors? Like, I mean, do they have like a cab? That it's no. Out? Okay, so it's only coming out of the PA. It's only coming yeah, out of the PA. That's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, real fucking weird. Yeah. Because if you're standing by the stage, all I'm hearing is the fucking drums and yeah. whatever's coming out of the monitors, which yeah. is barely, you can't hear, they're not even fucking mm. facing me. Yeah. So you have yeah. to stand in the back of the room to hear the mix and it sounded good there. But it's like, well, what about all the people sitting in the front of the room? Yeah. It's like, it just sounds fucking empty to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then I, I saw not having like my amp. On and then stage. I saw a glass jaw at the Rex and they were, oh, I was there. They were doing all that profiling stuff too. And like, did you, it sounded hollow. I don't know. I had my earplugs in. It did sound like, because like the way know. they have the PA there, all the sounds coming out of the PA, there's no stage volume at all. Yeah. And the PA is fucking like 20 feet in the air. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> all going above yeah. you. Yeah. So unless you're, again, standing towards the back of the room, you know, I'm sure it sounds great at the mixing desk yeah. for whoever's mixing it. Yeah. But if you're up close to the stage, again, it's a fucking rock show. That's where you want to be. You're not hearing anything. Yeah, I do remember it and that's like a, feeling like kind of, yeah. It's a I know huge, what you're about. huge pet peeve of mine. I don't think I was paying enough attention to realize they were playing through Kempers. So. Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm always like yeah. just nerding out <laughs> on that I stuff. I am. I'm surprised I wasn't. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's now that we're talking about guitar pedals, this got me thinking about yeah. something and we'll move into a segment. I like to do some uh, some music recommendations and the music recommendation for this week is somebody that's a very guitar pedal heavy band. So uh, you got to hear this. Car Bomb. Are you familiar with the band Car Bomb? I don't think so. No. So Car Bomb is one of these like tech metal bands from the early 2000s relapse records they're they've been like kind of on and off for i don't know they like put out albums very sporadically once every you know four or five years mm. they're operating independently now but they just popped up a new track of theirs just popped up randomly on spotify okay and uh i'm actually just gonna play you both a couple like a, a few seconds Let's of this just so you can hear uh so yeah this is a very guitar pedal heavy technical metal okay cool you into it yes cool let's see if this will work cool yeah Sky. 
I'll just let it play for into this next groove. So, so yeah, that's who Carbomb. Plays, who plays the ray gun in the band? <laughs> <laughs> so they, yeah, they they have like the most abrasive use of the Digitech whammy pedals. Oh, is that what it in is? In the world, the, the, yeah. More than Rage? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Uh, then, uh, that's cool, I, though. I've, I mean, those I've, are some cool fucking sounds. Yeah, man. I've yeah. seen them live, and it's definitely worth it. It's, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. definitely a band that, could very well like easily teeter on that sort of that overproduction sort of studio magic that we've been talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but they definitely pull off all that stuff live. And they've yeah, been a band, sick. they've been doing stuff like this since like before kind of like the modern technologies yeah, came yeah. out. Like they were doing, this doesn't really sound all that much different than stuff they were doing like 15 years ago, I dug it. which is fun. They so, just have new toys to play with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're definitely an interesting <laughs> band to go down the rabbit hole of if you're into that sort of like. Sounds like a, like an alien love ballad almost. And they, they actually, I mean, <laughs> I didn't let the song fully progress, but they go into like slower parts with like cleaner vocals. It almost sounds like Deftones at times. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're kind of like a Dillinger escape plan meets Deftones. Hmm. thrown in a blender with the blender sounds put in the mix i'm about it i'm, about <laughs> it. I'm gonna check it out okay yeah. do you have any music recommendations what have you two been listening to lately i don't know that's funny we were talking about this the other day and i'm always like i don't listen to music <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know i like i feel like i've been like going out of my way a little less and less because i've been like focusing more and more on writing mm -hmm. um I don't know. I, I bought a couple uh, a couple dollar CDs the other day. I got uh, Our Lady Pieces Gravity. Hell yeah. For a dollar. Um, I got, what's it called? The Miracle of 86. It was like Kevin Devine's band before he went solo. Okay. I found that for a dollar. And then I bought like a Coldplay CD. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, Rival Schools. I've been listening to their old album from like 2000 or whatever, like a lot. Uh, I think we've play a lot of old stuff. I don't keep up with new releases, unfortunately, but yeah. I've been listening to Sarah Blasco pretty much on repeat. Um, she's just like this like beautiful, sad woman. And I like to listen to her with my dogs. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I tried to listen to the new like He Is Legend song and okay. Spotify was fucking with me, so I gave up. Um, I really like, uh, <laughs> there's a couple that they put out. I think there's one that's called Boogie Woman. Okay. Or Bo yeah, yeah, I think I heard it. Like, that once. song is fucking tight. Yeah. It's good. I am. Um, I don't know. I still keep up with them, but I think um, their album "It Hates You." I think that'll always be. Like, I love that fucking yeah, album, yeah, it's dude. So it's really, good. really good. I was listening to it this morning. Yes, yeah, so. they're a band that, in my opinion, never got their fair due. No, I've I think seen they them. Finally, are. I, I, yeah. I hope so. I mean, I think that I understand it to some extent because, like, I've seen them live a lot, and a lot of the, I've seen them play. Uh, sets more than I've seen them play good sets. Yeah. And yeah. anytime I've ever tried to talk to any of them, they haven't been the nicest people. I so think, I yeah, totally I think like, like weird and stone. Yeah. I totally like, like uh, get it, but I still think they are a good band and yeah, hopefully they yeah. get their, their fair, their fair shot at some things. They do write really good music. Yeah. For it's sure. just like, kind of like all the other stuff that kind of seems to work against them. Yeah. Which is, yeah. it's so funny how much of that plays into being in a band like it's yeah. one thing like, i mean i try not to hold that against them because i'm the same way like i'm weird and awkward you know oh, totally and like, like yeah. multiple people have come up to me recently and like had conversations with me and thought like i totally thought you were like a pretentious asshole and i'm like i don't know why but <laughs> <laughs> it's probably because i ignore everyone <laughs> yeah yeah i cover I my know. face on stage yeah i don't know it's hard so i like i try not to hold that against bands if they don't uh, like talk to people oh yeah totally know? i mean uh, the other thing too is like the last thing that i typically want to do before or after a set is have small talk with somebody i don't know <laughs> especially before a set. <laughs> yeah. i don't know i'm in my own world before yeah a set. like after i don't mind but yeah. before i'm like I'm about to do my job. Please leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm preparing myself. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything until the set is over. And then I'm like, oh, okay. That's why it's, it's always nice to have a show at a place where you can kind of hide, which is yeah. like, again, that's yeah. that's cool for Cativo. They have like the shower curtains in yeah, the back that you can hide fake, behind. Our fake little green room. Green room. Yeah. yeah. I'm all about it. At least they tried. Yeah. yeah. No, it's better than nothing. <laughs> There's <yeah>. couches. <laughs> I think it's nice. <laughs> so again, the show is this weekend, this Saturday. Wait, no. Next Saturday. 
June 22nd. Saturday. Yeah. What's well, this is airing on the 17th. Oh, oh yes. Okay, Don't forget. Yeah. 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 Yes, it's this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> Sorry, what I ruined your introduction. Now I'm ruining this. Okay. I'm just like, it's okay. Don't worry. I I completely forgot that the camera stopped recording ten minutes ago. Oh, so okay. We have we're gonna have a a, bl- a blank screen for ten minutes. Okay. Not to I mention really, the thirty seconds we held our breaths too. No, but. that's there. That's in there. But your hysterical reactions to car bomb I did not get on camera, oh, which is a fucking bummer. bummer. That's okay. It happens. Yeah. And I really uh you know if anybody wants to be an unpaid intern and help run the camera and stuff for me in this room it would help because i am managing way too much right now <laughs> trying to navigate this uh it's I, it's it's kind of akin to like playing guitar and singing and trying to like get your pedals working at the same time and also keep an ear on everybody's mix and your monitor and it's like that but yeah in yeah, a different it's it's like too all much. this stuff yeah. at once like, ugh. Mm-hmm. well you're doing a great job thank yeah. you i appreciate that <laughs> Minus the the ten minutes of footage that I did not record. <laughs> Can so, you do like one of those like cartoon animations like they do in the documentaries when they don't have footage? It'll you know, probably like just be this. Okay. okay. Cool. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. What I need to yeah there there's there's I don't know it's fine. <laughs> if this is a, okay anybody out there that is actually watching watching this if you have a problem let me know. <laughs> Just leave a comment. You're gonna get so many comments. You'll get a. You'll, you'll get a. Re- I'll refund you. <laughs> <laughs> you get. Re- you'll get refunded for your free fucking subscription. So, with speaking of free and not making money doing things that you love, yeah. Uh, are you gonna have physical media for Lunatics? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, we kind of we go back and forth on this because she's uh, she's more the business side and I'm the uh, like I just want people to hear this. You know? Totally. Um, so we often like we meet in the middle. Um, so we printed CDs. That's all we, the only like physical format we have right now. Um, but it's $10 to get into the show, but you get the album for free. Cool. Um, and if you don't want a CD, um, we have download codes too. Uh, we tried to get stickers, but we kind of got screwed over on that end of things. Uh, but on we stickers. Still, well, download, download stickers. stickers. Oh, uh, we'll have regular stickers. Um, okay. So, but we'll have download codes. So if you don't, you know, if you don't want the CD, don't take it. We, you can just have a download code. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll have a physical format, and either one of them uh, is free with entry. With admission, yeah. yeah. Super cool. Yeah. And uh, you know, is there going to be anything? Uh, like, what's next? What what what's after this? Do you even have you have any thoughts? Any plans? Are you doing so, any like any vision. touring or anything like that? Or are you just like? Well, we're going to Dayton, Ohio, the night before the release. Oh, cool! June twenty first, so we'll get to see Tuno, um, and play with a mix of rock and hip hop acts. I think that night he has yeah. a couple hip hop yeah. artists cool. that are coming, and then whatever else I can brew up before then. <laughs> so we're probably just going to do mini weekends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so like a Friday, Saturday or even just a Saturday and like focus on like tri-state area, so around PA and mm-hmm. just take lunatics around. Yeah. And keep writing. We have like a couple of songs that are like in their beginning stages that we need to work on, but obviously our focus right now has been like rehearse, 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 rehearse. Um, so we're definitely like holding off on finishing any of those until after the 22nd. Totally. You got any like music videos or anything like that? Uh, we, we keep talking about one. Uh, we have a couple ideas floating around. Um, I think it, nothing it, yet. it's so weird getting into that, but it's almost like a necessity now. I, I think. know. I know. It's also, video it's is such a powerful medium now in 2019 people yeah. really like to see stuff yeah but even like back in the day like i remember i don't know i still remember when i was like 12 years old and i had to like turn this fucking knob to get the antenna on the in our roof to like spin so i could get mtv <laughs> okay to grandpa come through. yeah no this is like going back yeah um uh, just so i could like watch the fucking like at the drive-in one arm scissor video uh-huh. um but because it, it was so fucking good and like the deftones uh what was that the fly on the wall one or whatever change in the house of Life. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but like i don't know i always thought music videos were uh it just brings in a whole nother aspect um and yeah, I love them. I've it would be awesome. Yeah. I think it's more about like time. Like we have to get the time, time and money, financial. energy, uh, finding someone who like wants to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's we've definitely- just, again, we've had like kind of tunnel vision on just like trying to get this fucking release show. Totally. Well, I mean, if you have, if you need any, you know, suggestions for videographers, I know some really good, solid people that you could reach out to. Not saying that you don't, but yeah, you know, yeah. You, no, that's always good. Always, to always open to hear. Yeah, yeah always. What, who people have used. Feel free to feel free to reach out. Ask some questions. I'm always. Happy to 
spread my my uh, you know my pool of resources yeah. so people can get more work and so bands can do cool mm -hmm. videos and do yeah. cool things. I want I want to see everybody you know do as much as they can with the time that they have. Yeah. On this, you know, crazy little rock <laughs> we're floating yes. around on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking of seeing things, I'm going to do my my last suggestion and kind of wrapping up the conversation here. I do want to um, thank you both for coming on the show before we get into this, because I might forget to <laughs> thank you after this, because I'm going to I'm going to drop a, a real hot potato in your lap right now. Uh -oh. So you may be familiar with this. I had never seen this until yesterday. But if you haven't seen this, you got to see this. <laughs> so. uh has anybody ever seen uh, Van Halen, Michael Anthony's drunk bass solo? No. No. Is anybody familiar with this? Okay. So this is this is a fucking hoot. And I really <laughs> wish that, you know, Josh and Eric, I wish you could hear this. We can, you know, we'll figure out some way to make is this it, work. Is there a video? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. There's a video. <laughs> can we, is There's there a, a, like Actually, a date to this? Do you uh, know when? Yeah, let was? me let me. So I, I want to know all. I the have details. The, I have this pulled up. All right, so let's let's get YouTube over here. All right, actually, you know what? I think I could probably do. I think I could probably just unplug the this so the audio comes from the TV because, <laughs> spoiler alert, you really don't need to hear the audio, <laughs> <laughs> but you need to in a way. Uh, so I'm gonna unplug the audio and then uh, let me see if I if I can't get the. Uh, the audio to come through the TV here real quick. So let's see. Uh, yeah, cool. That should work. All right. So I'm going <laughs> to. So, yeah, this is uh, this is quite the treat here. Michael Anthony's drunk bass. So I saw this yesterday. Shout outs to my boy Mario for showing us this because it is quite a magical experience. I'm going to start you off right here. All right. Make sure our volume's good. Cool. on a chair. Like, so far, it's like, okay, fine, whatever. Like, you're just, you're kind of just making noise. Mm -hmm. Look at that face. <laughs> that bass is so sick by the way for those of you not watching again if you're still watching or listening after all this nonsense michael anthony is playing a jack daniels bottle bass which is making this even better <laughs> as we're at the climax of his solo <laughs> Oh. 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> most of the no most of the sound that he's making just sounds like the monster on Lost. <laughs> I was thinking Velociraptor. <laughs> I'm wondering, like, maybe he's playing through a Kemper, and that's why, we, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we can't hear it too well. <laughs> is that how long the solo is? Oh, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. We'll, we'll just stop it here. That's plenty <laughs> enough. But, yeah, uh... I just wanted to throw that out there because if you if you haven't seen the Michael Anthony drunk face, uh, you had to see it. <laughs> this will happen at the Lunatics release. Show. Yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite it's something. It's really really something. Um, next, you need to watch Flea play the national anthem. Okay. On, on bass, I'm telling you, look this up. I will look yeah. it up. I will. Thank you for the yeah. you got to see it yeah. suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing it out there. All right, so as we uh, reach, you know, the climax of our conversation here, there's there's really not much else to say after that. No, no. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so come to the, the the old game Lunatics album release show. It will be even better than that video. We uh, promise. Can you, uh, can you promise I can't that? Make any promises? <laughs> 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 Again, that is this Saturday, June twenty second, at Cativo with Sykes and the New Violence. Tino, that's mm -hmm. Tino. And Jess Klein and The Good Time. And a whole plethora of artists that, you know, some you may know, some you may not. Some you may know. You may not even know that they do art. Yes. You, so you may be surprised. So come on out for that. And uh, is there any other shows on the docket for you both? Um, and you I both? don't know. We've been... There probably are, but I'd have to look at my yeah. spreadsheet. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. So, uh, you know, with all that being said, let's uh, just get into this outro. Uh, yeah. and uh, that is all folks thanks so much for listening hope you enjoyed the conversation Tom Brenda, Josh, Eric and the peanut gallery well, thank you all for being here again you know if you are not in Pittsburgh or you can't make it out to the Lunatics album release show Lunatics will be available I imagine on the Spotify's and the Google's and I don't know, iTunes isn't going to exist anymore, so Apple Music or whatever that is, and uh, you'll be able to find it. Give it a listen, yep. especially if you're a fan of, you know, just no bullshit, rock and roll, moody shit. <laughs> it's tight. I like it. So, yeah. And uh, I'll be back again next time. Same place, same channel. You know the drill. My name is Sykes. Start the beat. 2019. Woo! Woo! Thanks for listening.